yesterday, we had a wedding in the church. And in a couple of weeks, a fortnight today, we'll be having a baptism in the church. Now, if I were to ask you what is the connection, what's the link between a baptism and a wedding, it's not what many people out there would assume. There's a widespread joke that the church is there for three important stages in life. When you're born, when you get married, and when you die. So some churches, we don't, but some churches christen babies when they're born, marry them when they are young adults, and, um, well, hold a funeral service for them when they um, have passed away. And that's what the church is for. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. That's not the connection between baptism and marriage. The connection is this. Marriage, as I said as part of the service yesterday, marriage is a covenant relationship. It's not a casual relationship. It's a covenant relationship. In which two people pledge themselves to each other publicly. And it's a binding relationship for that reason. Now, I know, we all know, because people are fallible human beings, marriages can hit difficult times. We know that. And we don't judge anybody for that. If and when it happens, it's sad, but there's, we don't condemn anyone for that. We're sorry about it. That's because we are human beings, and human beings are not perfect. And I'm sorry to disappoint you, but human beings are relatively unlikely to have become perfect by a week on Tuesday. You know, we, we are what we are. But the principle is that marriage binds people together in a covenant relationship that is different from any other. That is why... Marriage is similar to baptism. Or if you like, baptism is similar to marriage. Because when people are baptised, that's going to happen in a couple of weeks. When people are baptised, because they choose, having started to believe in Jesus, they choose to be baptised in the name of Jesus, that binds them in a covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? That's what baptism is. It binds us to Jesus. Not for obvious reasons, in the same way that a husband and wife are bound together in their love relationship, but in a genuine covenant relationship with Jesus in which he loves us and commits himself to us. A lot of people are frightened off by the prospect of baptism because they think it's all about me committing myself. I've got to make commitments. Suppose I can't keep them up. Suppose I'm not good enough. And I always try and explain to people who are inquiring or just asking about this whole baptism thing. Baptism is about a commitment. But it is first and foremost about Jesus' commitment to you. It's first and foremost about Jesus' commitment to you. And when people who started to put their trust in Jesus... And I said they want to start following him as Lord. When people on that basis are baptised, Jesus says to them, says over them, 
in their baptism, I will be your saviour. I will be your provider. I will be the one who leads you into and on through a new life which I will give you. You see, in a marriage, a couple have to say I will to each other. And as I pointed out yesterday, if one of the couple says I will, and the other says, well, I'm thinking about it, I'm sorry, we don't have a marriage. But Jesus doesn't say, when he looks at you, well, I'm wondering whether I might sort of love you and accept you, ish. Yeah. No, he says, I will. I will. I will be. All those things that we were singing about earlier in that second song. I will be your savior. I will be your provider. I will be your strength when you're feeling weak. I will be the one who walks with you when you're, you find yourself walking through the valley of the shadow, whatever kind of shadow it is. I will be there with you. <coughs> I will. And Jesus, when we are baptised in water, covenants himself to us. He commits himself to us. He says to us, I will. I will. And in the act of being baptized, we are saying in response to Jesus, I will. I will trust you. Well, let me tell you what we're not saying. We are not saying, I am capable of living a perfectly good Christian life. I'm up for it. That's not what we're saying. At least if it is what we're saying, can I say with the greatest of respect, we're fooling ourselves. What we are saying is, Lord, I want to follow you. On my own, I would struggle to do that all the time, but I will trust you to help me to be what you need me to be, what you call me to be, what you want me to be. That's the I will that we say to Jesus. It's my intention. It's my, it, yes, it's my heart desire. It's not my ability. I'm not saying I can. It's not a pressure I'm under. I'm not saying I must. I'm saying I will. In other words, it's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing to let you be my saviour. I'm choosing to let you be my guide. I'm choosing to invite you to be the one who will provide me with a new life and enable me to live it in a way that I can't live it on my own. So just as husband and wife, or bride and groom, technically, as <laughs> said, uh, bride and groom say to each other, I will, so, in baptism, never forget this is the most important thing. Jesus, our heavenly bridegroom, says to his bride, or at least a part of his bride, the church, somebody who's started to trust in him and look to him, Jesus says over them, as it were in the water, I will. I will. I will be to you everything you need me to be to you. But I will be to you what you need me to be in order that I might lead you into the fullest kind of life that God wants you to have. I will be there to keep you clean from anything that's wrong in your life and to ensure that you keep being cleansed by my grace. I'll be there to lead you into whatever it is I and my Father God have got planned for you in your life. Because I don't care whether you are two years old or 92 years old, there is still a plan for your future. 
And don't ever say that you don't have a future. If, if, if when you put some fingers there, it's hard to do this while holding the mic, but if when you put some fingers there, you can feel a pulse, right? You've got a future. <laughs> You've got a future. And in Christ, you've got an eternal future after that. But you've got a future. And Jesus says, I've got a plan for your future. And I would say over anyone as they're baptised, I may not literally say it in these words, but I would say over anyone being baptised, today is the first day of the rest of your life. And Jesus is now the one whom you've invited to shape that life. To lead you into it. To provide everything you'll need for it according to his will and purpose. So in other words, when people ask about baptism, what they're saying is, I would like to become the betrothed of Jesus. I'd like to covenant myself with Jesus. Because he's already committed himself in covenant love to us. It was when Jesus died on the cross that he said to the whole world and to every individual in the world, including you, including you, including you, including you, Jesus said in the moment he died on the cross, I will. I will. Cleanse you from all your sin. If that's what you ask me to do. I will be your leader and your guide, your strengthener. The one who will not only give you life, but uphold you in that life. I will. Now, in a normal marriage service, the bride and groom say, I will to each other within a few moments of each other. These days, people say their I will to Jesus about 2,000 years after he said their I will to them. Because it was when Jesus died on the cross that he was saying, I will. I will. But you know what? The word of the Lord endures forever. Right? The word of the Lord endures forever. If Jesus said it, Yesterday, or 20 years ago, or 2,000 years ago, it is still true today. Because the word of the Lord is true forever. Jesus said when he died on the cross, I will to you. I will accept you. Do you know, that's one of the things that some people find the most staggering of all. That Jesus would actually accept me. Me! I will accept you. I will love you. And I will lead you into a, an increasingly full experience of my love. I will. And some years later, people can say, in response to Jesus' eternal I will, their personal I will. That's what baptism is about. That is why baptism and marriage are similar. <coughs> it's about people being bound together in a covenant relationship. And in baptism, that's what's happening. Jesus is confirming his covenant to us, and we are affirming our desire to live in it with him. And it's the start of a whole new life. On the day of Pentecost, Peter concluded his sermon with the words, repent and be baptised. Repent essentially means change your mind. That's what the word means. Do a U-turn in your mind. Change your mind. Change your way. What he was specifically meaning, because he was addressing an audience of people who were Jews or converts to Jewish religion. 
and therefore who assumed that they were already, simply by virtue of the fact that they were Jews, they were already 100% acceptable to God. And Jesus says, change your mind about that. Stop trusting in your heritage, your religious background, and make this a personal choice to devote yourself to Jesus. Repent. And be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of your Jewishness. Not in the name of your practice of religion, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Change your thinking. And on that basis, just be baptised. He didn't say change your thinking and then in about 25 years... Uh, will baptize you. He said, make a decision in your mind. Make a new decision. And be baptized. Everyone. <coughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. And he promised two things to those who make that decision, who make that covenant commitment. Firstly, the forgiveness of sins. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. For the forgiveness of sins. One of the reasons baptism is a lovely picture of what Jesus does for us, this isn't the main reason, but one of the reasons is it means immersion in water, which is a picture of being cleansed, being washed clean. Water can wash us on the outside, but Jesus washes us on the inside. He makes us clean on the inside. And when Jesus makes us clean, Jesus keeps us clean. And the second thing that is promised to those who repent and are baptised is that they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. They will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus covenanting himself to us saying, I will fill you with my spirit who will enable you to be a follower of mine in a way that will go way beyond anything that you could be and do on your own. Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't mind me phrasing the question in this way, and I understand it's a slightly tongue-in-cheek way of phrasing it in English, but actually it reflects a biblical picture. Is anyone ready to get married to Jesus? In other words, to, to say, yes, I want to be in that covenant relationship with Jesus. I don't want to be in a casual relationship with Jesus. Or, yeah, a bit about him. Going to church. I want, I want Jesus to be the one in whom, with whom I live in, in that covenant relationship in which he is mine and I am his. Folks, it involves getting wet. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And for you, Here's Jesus' covenant promise. Forgiveness of sin. The free gift of God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus' wedding ring for those who become his beloved people. Jesus be the glory. Amen.